don't have this on camera. All right. Uh. Yo, welcome back to another video. Today I'm talking about why I think this is the best budget point and shoot camera you can buy. Let's go on to the video. I want to start this video off by saying I've been shooting with this camera ever since I've been shooting film, which was about like four years ago. So I've had some experience with it, if that means anything to you. This was the first film camera I've ever bought and it's definitely the one I use the most. So there are pros and cons to this camera just like any other point shoot, but I wanna let you guys know why I chose this camera and why I haven't bought another point shoot. Hopefully this video helps you out if you're looking for a new point shoot camera or if you're someone new to film and you don't know where to start. I'm gonna start off with a con since that's the shortest of my list. So yeah, let's get on with it. Okay, so the first con to this camera is the flash. Now don't get me wrong, I love flash photography and the look it gives, it's so much more different than natural light, but this camera does not give you the ability to turn your flash off or on. It has an auto flash, which basically means like, this camera will automatically turn the flash on if it thinks your photo or your subject is underexposed. Why Olympus chose to do that with this camera, I have no idea, but it's not the worst thing. I've read in some places that some people will actually gaff tape the flash on their camera, but I don't do that only because I know my camera is exposing whatever I'm taking a photo of with the flash in mind. So in order for my image to still look, oh, pretty okay, I just let the flash fire. And honestly, for me, it's not a huge deal, but it can be a nuisance sometimes if you don't want flash in your photo. So you can either just not worry about it or make sure that whatever you're taking a photo of, whether it's a person or like a landscape or a cone or something, whatever you're taking a photo of, just make sure that it is lit properly. That way your flash will not turn on. And honestly, this is a minor con for me because sometimes some of the photos that have come out from the flash going off when I didn't want to have become some of my favorite photos. The next con of this camera is that this camera is low key big. Of course, it's not as big and as chunky as a regular 35 mil, but if you want something a little bit more like smaller or portable that actually kind of fits in your pocket, I'd probably go with like an Olympus MJU or MG, whatever, however you pronounce it, or something in the sense of like a clamshell style body. Even though this con is minor for me, I just want to mention it because it could be a deal breaker for some of you guys. I'm mentioning this as a con because it was very frustrating when I first got the camera. When you load the film, it's very like, you have to make sure it's like super correct or it won't take the film. Like when I first got the camera and tried to load film into this camera, I was honestly scared that it was broken and I bought a broken camera off eBay. But I finally figured out how you're supposed to do it. You just gotta make sure that the tag is like in there but not like super in there. it's weird I, i'm gonna drop a link in the description just so you guys can see what i watch to help me load film if you're deciding to buy this camera so that's pretty much all the cons for me so i'm gonna go on to the pros the first pro of this camera is that it's low-key like Pretty sharp. This camera comes with a Zuko f2.8 35mm lens. It does really well both in like bright situations or dark situations. And here's some photos to help you guys see the sharpness of the lens. I recently found an eBay listings where someone took the plastic lens in front of the actual glass lens and it made their photos more sharp and I've done it myself with my camera, but more on that in another video. This next pro is kind of a con now as recently this camera has gotten a little expensive. When I bought the camera, it was 40 bucks and now it has gone up like way up. 
Um, it's definitely still a budget camera compared to like a Contax T2 or something on that range. But yeah, the price of this camera has gone up since four years ago when I bought it. Probably one of the most obvious pros of this camera is that it's a point and shoot camera. You can literally take it everywhere. And when I say like, I literally take it everywhere, I do. It is my go-to camera when I'm going out shooting with friends or I'm just trying to capture moments when I'm with my girlfriend, hanging out with friends, going to weddings, etc. This camera is usually always with me. For me, this camera is a perfect balance between portability and quality. This camera rarely misses focus as well. I usually fire the camera like this when I'm shooting and I can count on my hands how many times I miss focus with this camera. The key thing to nailing focus on the camera is that in the viewfinder, there's a little box that is in the middle of your viewfinder and if whatever is in the center of that is usually gonna be in focus. The last part of this camera is all the features that it includes. So two things this camera has is a focus lock and a self timer. But low key, I have no idea how to use a focus lock. So if you're somewhere out there who has this camera and knows how to use a focus lock, go ahead and drop a comment on how to use it because your boy doesn't know how and I've low key just never tried to learn. But I do know how to use a self timer and I've used it for a lot of my group photos whenever I wanna be in the photo, but also wanna take a group photo with everyone. To use the self timer button, you wanna press the self timer button on top of the camera and at the same time, half press your shutter button, which should trigger the self timer. You know if you trigger the self timer if you see a red light in front of your camera. Now you have 10 seconds to frame up everybody or make sure everyone's in place before it finally blinks three times and then fires the camera. So 10 seconds is a pretty long time. So you guys have a good minute, but I usually try to group everyone in and make sure it looks good before I start the self timer. So, and that's my review on the Olympus AF-1 and why I think it's one of the best budget point and shoot cameras you can buy. Um, I hope this video helped you out if you've been looking for a new point and shoot camera or if you're someone new to film and been trying to figure out what kind of camera to get or what kind of point and shoot camera to get. And if you guys have any questions about this camera, please feel free to comment down below or DM me at my film Instagram at jubilee.film. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. And if you're into film photography, subscribe to the channel. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.